Hey, this is Wesley with Millwright CNC. Uh, today we're going to go through using Universal G Code Sender with our machines. Uh, first off, we're going to start with where do you get it from? We're here on the Millwright CNC website. We're going to go to Resources. And on the Resources page, about the 8th or 10th choice, we have Universal G Code Sender 4th Axis version. It's also what will work with the 3 axis machines. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And you see it's downloading right here. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump ahead just a little bit to when it's finished. Okay, we're finished with the download. We're going to go here to the arrow and click show in folder. Alright, so it downloaded to downloads. That's fine. So what we're going to do here is we're going to right click and then we're going to extract all. Now I don't want it to go to downloads again so I'm going to browse. So I'm going to stick it on my desktop. All right, it is extracting. We're going to do a quick jump to when it's finished. All right, so it has finished extracting. I'm going to close all of this out. And it is right here, UGS platform. Now to open UGS, you double click on the main folder, come up here to bin, and then we have two choices. The UGS platform, UGS platform 64. Um, start out with UGS platform, and if it works, then that's one for you, and if not, try the 64. Now, sometimes when you open it, it will tell you it cannot find Java 1.8 or higher. If that happens to you, all you need to do is to go to java.com. and to download Java. All right, another thing that we can do just to make it easier is we can right click on the platform that we want to use, come down to create a shortcut. That's our shortcut right there. We're gonna click and drag it to our desktop. So now you don't have to go through the folders. You can just click on the shortcut. All right, so this is UGS. This is the welcome page. It has some information here for you. It'd probably do you good to read through it and, and see what they have to offer. One thing I do want to point out is that you do not have to do the setup wizard. Our machines come pre-configured for UGS, especially Millwright G Code Sender version UGS, and uh, you will not have to do the setup wizard. We'll get that out of the way. Now, the way the UGS is set up, it has some windows that you can modify, you can change the size, you can change the location. Um, all you do is find this little space in between the windows and you can resize them however you want. Uh, one other thing that you can do besides resizing is that you can see here on our jog controller tab, we can click and drag this and we can put it anywhere we want to. You can see a little ghost outline there of what it's going to look like when you release the button. So we will stick it here on the side. And there is the jog controller over on the right instead of over on the left. I happen to like it over here, so I'm just going to put it back. Now, besides the jog controller tab, we also have the macros tab. And that is a macro that we have stored on UGS. 
but we also have common actions here that have soft reset, turn off alarm lock, and home machine. Those are going to be the three important ones. Overrides, you can change the, the feeds and speeds. We have no spindle control uh, coming from us. If you have a spindle, you can modify the speed control here. You can also modify the rapids here. It's not a window I use very much. And then we have the controller state DRO. Now this window uh, has a little bit more information here. It'll tell you what alarm is being triggered. And up here it says, currently says offline, but if I was connected to a machine, it would say idle. And if I hit a uh, switch without meaning to, uh, outside of a homing cycle, it would show an alarm here. Um, they also have these little, they also have these X's that will let you close a window. If you do it accidentally, you can come up here to window and you see some of them controller stays here the macro screen is here console is here and so is the visualizer if you go to classic you'll see common actions if you go down the plugin you will see the jog controller so if you happen to close out a window and you didn't mean to just go to the window you closed and it will pop back up and then you can resize it however you need to. Right. This is the visualizer. When you load a program it will pop up here and you will be able to see an outline of the machine pathing. Um, usually you can tell what program you have installed. It will also be listed up here in the top. You have in the console window you have a command line in which you can type in g-code commands. You can also uh, type in a dollar sign, dollar sign to pull up a list of the, the uh, pre-installed uh, uh, settings if you need to for any reason. Now up here we have the open icon. This is how you open and load files. We have the connect icon. This is how you establish a connection with your machine using a USB cable. Uh, the firmware is going to be Gerbil every time with our machines. And this drop down will show you all the available COM ports. Now with our version of Universal G-Code Sender, you can just click this refresh. I'm not plugged into a machine right now, but if you were, it would automatically select the right COM port for our machines. Um, this is the play, stop, and pause button. And that is something that would become available when you connect to a machine. This is the home machine button. The same thing is down here in the common actions window. And this button will allow you to make your smartphone a pendant. You click the pendant button and it will bring up this URL code that you can scan with your smartphone or you can enter this URL into a browser on your phone and as long as your computer and your phone are connected to the same Wi-Fi network you will be able to use the phone as a pendant. Jaw controls are standard jaw controls. If you're looking at the front of any of our machines where you can see the Millwright sticker, Y plus will move the machine towards the rear. Y minus will move it towards the front. X minus will move it left. X plus will move it right. And then Z plus will move up and Z negative will move down. Now in the controller state DRO window, you have two numbers that will be populated when you connect to a machine. The top number is your work coordinate, your work position, and the bottom number is the machine coordinate. Um, these will not be set, the bottom numbers will not be set until you home the machine. They may be populated, but they will not be set until you home the machine.
the top number, your work position number, can be changed uh, to zero by hitting this X sub zero, Y sub zero, and Z sub zero button. That is something that we'll, we will do uh, coming up soon. Something else that might become handy later on, especially if you watch our video about the the touch plate. Uh, there is a macro that we have available on the product page of on our website uh, for the touch plate. There is a macro that you can load into the macro window and this is that macro. You would hit uh, import to have it uh, populated into the macro window. And then you can see the macro right here. If I was connected and I pressed this button, it would initiate a probe cycle for the Z, X, and Y using a the information for a quarter inch end mill. Alright, now the only thing to do is to actually connect with a machine and show you how to get one set up for a project. So first we're going to open up UGS platform. We are going to be connecting to a Carve King 2. Alright, so we hit the refresh to choose the correct port automatically. We hit the connect button. We have a list of settings scroll across the console screen. That's how you know that we are connected to the right machine. I have hit the Y negative button. You can tell that we scroll very slowly and that's because our settings are incorrect. Our step size XY should be 10. Our step size Z should be 4 and our feed rate should be 9,000. And as you can see, when I press the button, you can definitely see an improvement in our movement speed for the Carve King 2. Now we're going to manually trigger the Z alarm to see if it's picked up in UGS. It is, so we're gonna hit the soft reset button, turn off alarm lock. Now we're going to hit the X alarm and that is working as well. We're going to reset. Now we are going to hit the Y. Looks like all our switches are working correctly. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to initiate a homing cycle. The machine is first going to move up in the Z. It's going to hit the switch and it's going to pull off slightly and it's going to move back towards the switch at a reduced speed to get an accurate triggering of that switch. Once it does that, it's going to move off to four millimeters as preset distance. Then it's going to move simultaneously in the X and the Y direction to hit those switches. You do want to make sure that the switches are positioned where they will be uh, uh, flipped, where they will be uh, uh, triggered, or the machine will run out of movement space and it will continue to push against whatever is blocking movement. All right, so now we are We have homed the machine and we are now going to set our X, Y, uh, zero, our X, Y uh, work coordinates. So we moved up to the bottom left. And when I say bottom left, I mean the left hand side of the stock that is closest to the front of the machine. What we are doing now is uh, reducing the step size so that we can have more control over our position in the X and in the Y. As soon as we get those where we want them to be, and we're, we're just going to eyeball it for this, 
we are going to come down and we're going to press X sub zero and Y sub zero in the controller state DRO, which will set those two axes to zero. Now we are going to reduce the step size for the Z to get closer. And once we are fairly close, we are going to get a sheet of paper, just a standard notebook paper, and we're going to reduce the size to 0.1 millimeters per click. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the piece of paper underneath the end mill, in between the end mill and the stock, and I'm going to move it back and forth. While I move it back and forth, I am going to jog down Z until the end mill pinches the piece of paper against the stock. Once the end mill pinches the piece of paper, I know that I am uh, right above the stock. I am only uh, three thou above the stock, and in most cases that is good enough for the type of work we are doing. If you needed precision placement on the Z, you would have to offset your Z position by plus three thou to compensate for the thickness of the sheet of paper. Now we are going to move off of the stock. We are going to move it towards the middle of the stock. And then we are going to test our XY position. So we're in the middle of the stock now. We're going to come down to the command line of the console window. And I'm going to enter G0, X0, Y0. I'm going to hit enter and it should go back to where we zeroed out the X and the Y. Alright, that looks good. Now uh, we're going to do the same thing for the Z. You want to be careful doing this. Make sure nothing's in the way or you will have a crash. That looks great too. So what we're going to do now is we're going to lift it up out of the way and we're going to load a program. To do that, we come up to the file icon in the top left of your screen. Lifting it more out of the way. All right, click the file icon and we have some that I have made previously. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose a profile uh, toolpath for a video we, done, we did previously. It's going to be for the uh, finger tenons, the proof of concept uh, video that we did. So we're going to open it out and you'll see the outline of the profile pass for the finger tenons. So we're going to zero out our Z and then we're going to press play. Now the machine is following the outline of the first finger tenon uh, piece that was loaded with that program. It's moving pretty good. Now besides the play, we also have a pause function. You can press that to stop the program in any portion of the, uh, of the program. You can press play to restart it. There's also a stop function in case you needed to terminate the, uh, the cut for whatever reason. All right, and since we're above the stock, we're going to also show you how to do this, how the return to zero button functions. You press it and it'll return to your starting position on the B line, X, Y, and Z. So we walked you through all the functions of uh, Universal GCO Sender, at least on a, on, a, on a basic level, enough to get you familiar with the, uh, with the program and to get start cutting with our machines. And, uh, we appreciate you tuning in today. If you have any questions, you can always email us at support at millwrightcnc.com. Thanks.